So in December 2011, a black man was killed in St. Louis. His name was Anthony Lamar Scott, he, or Anthony Lamar Smith, I'm sorry. He was 24 years old, and he was killed by Jason Stockley, a police officer for the St. Louis Police Department. Now, the situation regarding all of the, what actually happened is very controversial. Unlike a lot of other police killings that have drawn public attention, this one was not just an innocent guy minding his own business getting shot. This guy was in um, was involved in a drug deal and did try to evade the police and actually came close to one of the officers when attempting to flee. Although, if you watch the video, I think it's pretty sh pretty clear that he's not trying to run this cop over. He's just trying to get away. And... They chase him about a mile down the road, and then um, Lamar Smith hits a utility pole, crashing his car, and while the cops are behind him, right before he crashes, you hear Officer Stockley say, quote, I'm going to kill this motherfucker, don't you know it? So, hops out of the car once Lamar Smith strikes this utility pole, draws his weapon immediately, goes to the driver's side door, unloads five shots, kills him. Now, the this is where it gets really weird. The cop said he saw a gun in the car and felt fearful for his life and, you know, shot, and therefore it should be justified. But there's camera footage of the officer Stockley going back into a police SUV, reaching into the back seat, grabbing something out of a bag, and returning to the vehicle. Now, we weren't able to see exactly what it was that he did grab, but the gun recovered in Smith's car was not, or did not have his DNA on it. It had Officer Stockley's DNA on it. And because this happened in 2011 and it's only getting tried in 2017, that goes to show that this is a case that was taken very seriously. Um, th even though uh, people had planned on this decision becoming, or, you know, getting handed down because, you know, they feel, especially in St. Louis, which is really close to Ferguson, Missouri, where the Mike Brown hands up, don't shoot thing happened. They feel like they're not going to be able to win the case or if anything were to happen, you know, they planned ahead that we're going to protest and do the civil disobedience. And so you have DNA on the gun that did not match the DNA of the suspect, but did match the DNA of the cop. You have the cop saying he's going to kill that motherfucker while he's, you know, seconds away from killing him. And they're, the prosecution felt very, very secure about being able to get a guilty verdict. I don't know all of the ins and outs of the case, admittedly. I'm really trying to focus more on the protest as aspect of what's going on now because, like I said, this is a convoluted um, story, and I don't really know. I'm not informed enough at this uh, you know, moment in time to give an opinion on whether or not the shooting was justified. Now, it does sound fishy, and... Yeah, if you say you're going to kill somebody and then you kill them, that's usually premeditated murder. However, when you're in a car chase, you know, you don't know what's going through a cop's head. I'm sure he said people say stupid shit all the time. So you can't take that and extrapolate that he's guilty just off of that solely. But following his acquittal by the judge, it was not a jury selection um, that ruled this case. It was a judge. And he found that there was not enough evidence to rule beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer acted with the intention of premeditated first-degree murder. And that could have carried a sentence of up to 60 years in prison, or life in prison, I'm not sure which. And, yeah, he got off. Um, now, like I said, I don't know if this cop did it or not in a malice way, but... This pattern is so fucking frustrating. It's recurring nonstop. 
we see it with Tamir Rice. He gets off, or, you know, his killer gets off. He was a 12-year-old boy playing with a BB gun in a park. He did not deserve to die. But he was shot in two seconds within the police r- arriving. Eric Gardner, he was choked by the police in New York City. None of the officers were charged. You have Fro- Philando Castile. He was killed in the passenger or in the driver's seat of his car with his girlfriend and his baby in the back while after letting the officer know he was a licensed gun owner and had a gun in the car he was reaching for his wallet when the officer shot him got off scot-free so all of these police killings and i mean i've only listed a handful there are so many more guys that are just totally unjustified lamar scott He's another one. I believe he was shot in the back running away. And when all of this shit happens, especially to a marginalized community like African Americans in inner cities all across this country, they have felt nothing but oppression for the last, well, fucking forever, really. But they've never been given the same economic opportunities as their white counterparts. You see it in places like New York where when the immigrants started moving in, all the white people would move out of neighborhoods and then they become exclusively black. Then you would have the cops, you know, doing their beats around the poorer neighborhoods, arresting the poorer kids, staying out of the more affluent neighborhoods. And this kind of system that we have right now is just set up to screw these people over. It's set up to make money off of the marginalized and the oppressed, the ones who cannot afford legal representation, the ones who cannot fight back for themselves. And it's sad. So, in this um, protest, there have been a reported 10 officers that have been injured, two of them only injured bad enough to seek medical attention. They were hit by a brick, the two that went to the hospital apparently. Obviously, I don't need to say anything there. Throwing, you know, violence of any kind is not acceptable. Civil disobedience is one thing. Peaceful protesting is one thing. Violence is never the answer. You're never going to get your message across through violent actions. And if you do, you would have to beat the whole United States government, so good luck. It's only going to lead to more terrible things happening, more property destruction, more people getting arrested, more cops getting hurt, more civilians getting hurt, all around bad shit. And we don't want to see it devolve again. And I'm really afraid that this is going to start to spark another kind of Black Lives Matter-esque reaction from the more conservative-leaning cop protecting um people out there on the internet and then you're gonna have the people who are the complete opposite and i feel like it's just gonna go they're gonna go at each other's throats all over again and this is just an obvious obviously it's a sad situation but it's gonna get worse and i you know i just things have been boiling over so long in this country now when people, especially marginalized people, feel like they've had their, like they've had boots on their neck their entire lives, they're gonna eventually snap. And I'm not saying there's gonna be a race war. I'm not saying that there's gonna be a lot of, you know, deaths or violence that result from this. But there could be some violence that results from this, and it can only at this point really hurt, in my opinion. The people who are protesting. And even though they're protesting for a just cause. You're not going to advance your narrative through this type of action. And I'm not talking about just violent protests either. You You have to figure out a way. Because obviously marching in the streets right now is not working. We need to figure out a policy solution. A a consensus among community leaders, maybe police departments. Well, there has to be a way to work this out because it can't continue. And 
there's been more protests today. Um, last time I checked, 32 people have been arrested. Um, in total, I'm sure that number's probably up to 40, 50 now. Um, you know, like I said, 10 injured officers, but you know, some of them were hit with water bottles. I think the police do tend to exaggerate some of their officer injuries a little bit. I'm not trying to downplay that, but you know, police officers are very protective of their own more so than civilians which is kind of ironic but you know they prepared ahead of time for it i don't think the cops did a bad job handling the response to the verdict i think they let people um convey their free speech totally okay i think that they let people voice their concerns and then when it did turn violent and they believe it was outside agitators. I believe it was outside agitators, but I don't believe they were paid protesters. I just believe that they're people who came around from surrounding areas who had nothing better to do and maybe had some sympathy towards the cause and were, you know, at the point where they didn't care and they just wanted to break some shit. So we'll keep an eye on the developments there and let's just all try not to make this a... It, of course, is a white-black thing. But we can do our own part by talking to each other and opening a dialogue. You know, maybe the Blue Lives Matter guys that you've always had some animosity towards and never got along with on the Internet, maybe you start a conversation with them saying, you know, this may not have been the best shining example of police brutality towards an individual just because of the extenuating circumstances. But, you know what like is there something that what would you do to address the police problem you know don't ever try to put the onus on them like they're so, some type of responsible for it because most people who support cops aren't they're not responsible for the shit that cops do but they feel you know right or wrong they feel like the cops are the ones who are going to be the protectors the ones who are going to protect their rights from everybody and they're going to look out for them so you just need to keep that in mind as well. And, uh, you know, I'll shut the fuck up now. I'm pretty much rambling at this point. So if you like what I do, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Do all that good stuff. And I'll see you fuckers later. Peace out.